Okay, so up here on uh, this review, we just did one like this in the warm-up, so we're not going to do another one of these. But I do want us to go down here and look at how to graph the tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. All right, so tangent, do you guys know what it looks like? Mm -hmm. Yep, it's got that kind of curve. Yep. So let's talk about why it looks that way. So if I want to graph this, I can make my unit circle. And I know that point right there, that's going to be 0, negative 1. This point is going to be 1, 0. This point is 0, 1. And this point is negative 1, 0. So if I want to know the tangent at negative pi over 2, that's going to be y over x. What's that going to be? Right here, negative pi over 2, what's y over x going to be? Undefined. undefined. What happens if we have a value that's undefined? What do we get? A vertical asymptote, right? Okay, what about down here at negative pi over 4? Do you guys know the tangent if we have that 45 degree reference? It is, but in that quadrant it would actually be negative 1. Good. So this is negative 1. And then at 0, doing y over x, what's it going to be? Zero. What about a pi over four? One. And then pi over two? Undefined again, which gives us another vertical asymptote. Okay, so at negative pi over two, we're going to have this vertical asymptote. At positive pi over two, we're going to have this vertical asymptote. And this is going to continue forever because it's a periodic function. So negative pi over two, positive pi over two, three pi over two, five pi over two. We we'll continue on indefinitely. Plotting these points, at negative pi over 4, we're going to be at negative 1. At 0, we're at 0. And at pi over 4, we're at 1. And so this is the way that tangent graph is going to look. And it's just going to continue like that forever. So is this tangent graph increasing or decreasing as we read from left to right? Increasing. So the tangent graph is always increasing. And its vertical asymptotes are always going to be at x equals pi over 2 plus pi k. You might be thinking, why are you saying that? Well, pi over 2 right here, this is going to be a vertical asymptote. My next one, if I add pi on, I get the next one. Here's pi over 2 again. If I go back this way, then it's going to be subtracted. Subtract the pi. So what we're saying here is that k can be either positive or negative integer. And that will give us any of our vertical asymptotes. And that's because the period of this is pi. Okay? Alright, the next one I want us to graph is the secant curve. Alright, so to graph the secant curve, what we'd like to do is we want to think of secant as being the reciprocal of cosine. So I'm really going to think of y equals cosine theta. Do you guys remember the five key points for cosine, how they go? One, zero, one, zero. Right, and then that pattern is just going to continue. So I know secant then is going to be the reciprocal. Well, the reciprocal of one is one. The reciprocal of zero is undefined. The reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1, undefined, 1, undefined, negative 1. So that's going to help us to graph these secant curves. So what we're going to want to do then is we're going to want to uh, put in vertical asymptotes there at pi over 2, at 3 pi over 2, at 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, etc. If I go to 0, I have a point of 1. Pi, we're at negative 1. Uh, 2 pi, we're at 1. 3 pi, we're at negative 1. Now, we have to remember the secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So, like right here, if I think of that cosine curve, I'm going to put it in a uh, different color. I'll use green for it. Here's what the cosine curve looks like. <coughs> and I know 
one that's speaking is going to be the reciprocal. So if I look right here, this y value, say right here, that's about negative a half. What's the reciprocal of negative a half? Negative two, right? So then my cosine is going to have a, or sorry, secant is going to have a value of negative two right there. What about here? Well, again, I have a value of negative one half, so the reciprocal is going to be negative two. And so this is the way that's going to look. That secant curve. Same thing here. Cosine has a value of one half here. That reciprocal is two. Here the value is like one tenth. The reciprocal is ten. Can you see now why that secant curve looks the way it does? Okay, it should make more sense. A lot of times we just memorize these, but we don't understand why. So the secant curve is actually what we have in pink. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that green because that's not actually the curve. That just helps us understand why it looks the way it does. Now, the other thing I'd like you to be able to do is to graph it on your calculator. So let's just check it on the calculator. So go to y equals, clear it out, and we're going to type in 1 divided by cosine x. Um, I'm going to check my mode, make sure I'm in radians. And I'm going to do a zoom trig. And now it shows us what that speaking curve looks like. And that's what we got, so we know that we're correct. Okay? Alright, so rather than going through and explaining every single one, I just want you to kind of think quickly about how uh, cosecant would work. How can we quickly graph cosecant? It's going to be the uh, reciprocal of time, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to graph the sine curve. So quick doing that, that's going to go like this. It's going to go 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, forever. So here's the sine curve. And so then if I want to do the reciprocal, anywhere I have zero, the reciprocal of zero is undefined. And so now I can see what that cosecant curve is going to look like. It's going to be these pink. They almost look like parabolas. They're truly not parabolas. They just appear to be. Problems must be of the form y equals x squared. And these don't always meet that requirement. And now I'll just get rid of the sine curve. No way. Alright, or maybe I won't get rid of that. There we go. And that's what it looks like. Alright, cotangent. Show you how to quickly do this. Cotangent. Thinking of that unit circle, this point one zero, this point zero one, this point negative one zero, zero negative one. Cotangent is going to be x over y. X over y. So when I'm at zero, what's x over y? Undefined. At high over two, what's x over y? Zero. At pi, x over y is undefined. And we're going to continue with this pattern. It's going to go undefined zero, undefined zero, undefined zero, etc. Now, the way I can figure out whether this goes up or down, think from zero to pi over two, that's the first quadrant. Are my cotangent values positive or negative in the first quadrant? Positive. So every value I get here would have to be positive, so it's going to have to look like that. In the second quadrant, what's true of cotangent, positive or negative? So every single value I get would have to be negative. And so here's how the cotangent curve goes. The cotangent curve always goes down. That's the way I remember that. If I need it quickly, I think down. Okay? And it also has this vertical asymptote. Look at that O. At zero. That's where the first one is. So the vertical asymptotes can just be an x equals pi k because that first vertical asymptote is zero. 
So it's going to be a pi times 0, pi times 1, pi times 2, etc. All right. And we just want to do this one problem and then we'll be finished. On February 10, 2012, high tide in Boston was at midnight and the water level was 9.9 .9 feet. The water level at the next high tide, 12 hours later, was again 9.9 .9 feet. The low tide water level, which occurred in the middle of the high tides, was 0.1 feet. The curve representing the data is given by a sine or cosine curve. Find an equation for water level in Boston as a function of time. Alright, so we know this has to be a sine or cosine curve. We're going to call time zero, that's going to be representing midnight. Okay. So what is the water level at midnight? Okay. Right, so we're going to have 9.9 .9 feet there, I'll just call this y. Now, in between the high tide and the low tide, so they tell us the low tide was in the middle of the high tide. So 12 hours later, the high tide was again 9.9 .9 feet. Okay. It, directly in between these two, we have that low tide of 0.1. So what's right in the middle of 0 and 12? 6. So at 6 hours, we had to have the low tide. In order to have... Um, a sinusoidal curve, meaning sine or cosine, we need to have a middle point too. So like this is the highest point, this is the lowest point. What would the middle of those be, of 9.9 .9 and 0.1? Five, good. So we would have to have five feet in between there. We're trying to get five key points. Well, what's in between zero and six, and in between six and 12? Nine, right? So here are those five key points that we would get. And now we have to come up with an equation for this. Well, to come up with the equation, I think this is the easiest way to find out what B is. B is always going to be the period divided by, hold on just a minute, uh, period is equal to 2 pi over B. So B is going to be, sorry, 2 pi So the B value then is always going to be 2 pi divided by the period. That's the quick way to find B. So what's the period here, guys? 12. So the B value then is going to have to be 2 pi divided by 12. And what's that going to be? Pi over 6, right. So there's our B value. Now let's decide is the sine or cosine. Look at the pattern cosine, right, because these two are the same, so it's cosine. Alright, so let's jot down what we know so far. We know it's y equals, and we know it's cosine. We found b, b was pi over 6 t, so we know that much. Is there anything else you know? We need to know what goes in front, and what goes, what the shift was. Do you know either one of those? Shift was outside. And how do you know that? Because the word is zero is five. Right. So this pattern for cosine should go one, zero, negative one, zero, one. Right? So if these zeros are not zeros, that means it had to have been shifted up. So we know it has to be plus five. So it has to be the plus 5 at the end. The only thing left to figure out is this right here, the amplitude, or the A value. Cosine is supposed to go down. Is this going down? Yeah, so it's going to be positive. We know that much. These are supposed to be one apart. Are those one apart? No. How far apart are they? What are they? 4.9, right? So 4.9 is going to have to go right here. And that's what we came up with. 
Now, the great thing is, technology, we can check this answer. So something like this, this is pretty complicated. It's easy to make one little mistake and not have it work. So what I'm going to do is go to y equals, just type this in. So this is what we think the answer should be. And I'm going to look at it, zoom trig. So here's the way it looks. Looks good, but I want to check my table of values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my table. So I go second window. My table that I had there started at zero. And how much was it increasing by every time? Three. And so now I'm going to go back and look at this table and I'm going to check the points out. 9.95.159.9. That, that's correct, isn't it? Okay. Let's say that we accidentally put a negative in front of here. That's a common mistake. Look what happens when I look at my table now. No, I don't want you to graph. So see how now when I look at my table, see how it's not correct if I had that negative? Because now it's going low to high instead of high to low like it's supposed to. All right? We're going to stop there. The, the rest of the notes are just review over inverse, sine, cosine. And we're going to play a game to practice that instead of taking notes over.